Hey everyone, what's up? Josh here, and today I have a fascinating video as we'll be reviewing the brand new Varia VS3 coffee grinder. This is the Gen 2, a successor of the Gen 1 Varia VS3, and I am fascinated to explore what has been inherited from the previous model and what's been upgraded. And of course, I'll share everything that you need to know about this version, sharing all of its specs, as well as later on in the video, we do a taste comparison. So what happens when you put this grinder to the test with different coffee beans? Can it truly deliver on a perfect cup? And what about its ease of use and cleaning? You won't want to miss the answer to these questions, so let's get started. Now, as I've already mentioned, this is the follow-up to the original version of the VS3, which I did a review of not even 12 months ago. And the VS3 since then has been featured in many other videos where I've done comparisons to other great grinders as well as brewing tutorials. And at one stage, I was even saying that it was the best espresso grinder found under 600 Australian dollars. I'm here today to see if that still stands true with the generation two. Now, much of this grinder from the outside looks identical to the Gen 1. And a snapshot of the Gen 2 is it is still a single dosing 38 mil six core conical burr grinder with low retention, predominantly grinds for espresso, but does filter coffee just as well. And it comes with an included bellows and an RDT bottle. So on paper, that's still pretty good value for that low end of the mid price grinders. With a further look of the specs and starting up top in the hopper, you have a 30 gram bean capacity with integrated magnets in the lid to the hopper. Also with that additional bellows, which you can keep off till the end of grinding or leave on, which I do, this assists in reducing retention on the VS3 to almost zero. In the hopper, you have a removable finger guard, and this kind of acts like an anti-popcorn screen. I've since learned to leave this in the top of the bellows, and beans do occasionally get stuck, however, it is no issue pushing them down further into the burrs. The hopper itself, this acts as the stepless micrometric grind size adjuster, where you twist it to change the grind. Now, it stops at zero, and also goes around two or three times past nine to get to any coarser settings. And for every notch on the dial, you move the burrs 0.01 of a millimeter, and this translates to 10 microns of vertical burr movement. Moving down to the catch cup, this is made from metal and is magnetically aligned underneath the grinder chute. This has the same capacity as the hopper, although at around 20 grams, it does start to get fairly full. To the side of this, you'll find the on and off button. And this is situated on the side of the grinder. And I find this to be great placement for that easy action to turn this grinder on. Taking a look at the outer body of the VS3, this is made from a durable aluminium alloy and is spray coated in a high grade scratch resistant powder in either black or white. And in fact, it is only the finger guard, the hopper, and the feet of this grinder where there's any rubber or silicon used. And this does give the Varia VS3 a very refined feel when grinding with it. And noticeable is the 76.5 degree slope lean that the grinder sits on. This is great for low retention as you let gravity do its work and it adds to a more consistent feed rate of the beans into the burr set. The burrs used on the Varia VS3 are a six core, 38 mil conical, high nitrogen stainless steel burr set. These are Varia's own burrs, referred to as a stainless steel supernova burrs. There are a total of five burr sets that you can install on the Varia, each slightly a better version than the next. Now the innovative design of the outer burr set in the generation two is just incredible. And Vari have crafted it from a single piece of stainless steel. And they must have had to have been so precise on their tolerances that this approach to the outer burr set surely assists in the exact alignment and stability during the grinding process. And I would add to that, I also suspect it will translate into a significantly improved consistency in the particle distribution, but we can certainly investigate that the further we go along. It is so easy to now to change these burr sets out as there is nothing to be unscrewed. And you're literally changing in and out a whole burr set along with its carrier in one go. Now, one of the standout upgraded features of the VS3 Gen 2 is its 100 watt DC motor. This motor now provides more power and efficiency and boasts a full stainless steel gearbox where doubts were raised on the longevity of the previous Gen 1's plastic gearbox, the Gen 2 with metal gears 
obviously offer improved benefits when compared to their plastic counterparts, such as superior strength and heightened reliability. One additional bit of pushback the Gen 1 got was how slow it ground. The Gen 1 had a 160 RPM burst speed, whereas the Gen 2 is almost 20% faster using a burst speed of 190 RPMs. So I am keen to see how this improves grinding when we grind out a full 20 gram dose on an espresso setting. So let's do that now. I have it set on three. Cool. Start the clock. I do notice just a slightly increased amount of noise coming from the grinder versus the Gen 1, but it's not a whole lot more. All done, nothing more to come through. And that was much quicker. So with a little bit more noise, but you get it over and done with pretty soon. Yeah, these grinds look fantastic. So being an all-purpose, all-brewing methods grinder, here is what I found to be the best grind settings for particular brew methods. So let's talk accessories. We all love accessories. Now I've already mentioned the bellows. You also get an RDT bottle for spraying your beans. Now I do this every dose, faithfully aware that it does reduce static electricity when grinding, which is just about unavoidable unless you do this. It does make a big difference. And the Varia also comes with a complete kit of replacements, such as burr springs, burr washers, a magnet for the catch cup, additional screws and silicon feet. And this package, it's hard to think of any other grinder that offers this. All right, so we've made it to the espresso tasting time. Now, there was a whole bit about this grinder in the review that I did of the Gen 1, and it was about how amazed I was that a 38 millimeter conical burr grinder for under 600 Australian dollars was producing espresso shots that were sweet, clean, juicy, vibrant, all those good words. As I was more accustomed to, say, a Barazza Sete or a compact K3 style of conical burr flavor, so a little bit more body forward and heavy chocolates. So this really stood out to me, I guess, as something quite unique and amazing. Now, today, since so many of you have been asking, I will have two Varia BS3s, one with the default burrs, comparing it against one that has the Ultra Hypernova burr set installed, which is the top line, the newest burr set from Varia that you can install in your VS3, as well as adding a Fellow Opus in the lineup. Now, the Fellow Opus was the most recent victor in the cheapest espresso grinders comparison video I most recently did, which you can find in this link in the top corner of your screen. I think that's enough words. Let's just rack up these espresso shots, taste them blind side by side, and see how we go. All right, espresso tasting time. Three espressos racked up uh, on an El Salvador. It is an SL28 variety. Uh, it's a washed process and tasting notes of blood orange, cranberry, and toffee. Delicious. How did the espressos run? Uh, the Opus, man, the Opus was a little tricky with its retention. I'll say the retention on the Opus is not as great as the Varia's. The default burrs on the Varia, pretty straightforward. I found the right grind setting I wanted for my flow of espresso, and it was a notch four. Now, for the interesting part, uh, getting to the Ultra, the Hypernova Ultra burr set. So, obviously, default reference point was four, so I started on four. Man, that shot ran super fast. Like it poured out at like 12 seconds. And it can't be going, I was thinking, nah, surely, surely maybe I've got something wrong. So I did it again. Again, it just ran out at 12 seconds. So that kind of gave me the indication, okay, I'm gonna have to really turn this finer and finer again. I think I ended up on like 
just that notch coarser than three, which is like a huge degree. Like normally it might be half, like two or three notches or maybe half a whole setting, but this was a full setting finer um, from four to three, which gets me thinking it almost, and you know, tell me if I'm speaking, speaking out, of, uh, out of line here. It was almost like the Hypernova Ultra Burst set was acting like a unimodal burst set. Now, it possibly can't be unimodal because it's conical, so it's naturally going to be bimodal, but uh, yeah, it was really bizarre, the flow rate. I had to fine it up a lot, so it was really slow to begin with at the start of the shot, and then it sped up and caught up to the rest of my flow rates, which I was all trying to match. They all ended up perfect, where exactly how I wanted them to be. Now I'm completely confused which coffee's which, so we're just going to bring all three espressos out without knocking them over. Yep, all right. Now what I like to do here is I'm just gonna taste all three espressos and then uh, I'll line them up from left to right, favorite to not so favorite, talk about it, and then I guess we'll just check out what grinder is what. Let's do this. I'll start with my right. All right, so I've just tasted them all and I switched them all around. I don't know what order they were in before, but now this is my favorite cup. This is my second favorite cup and this is my, I guess the least favorite cup. They're all delicious coffees actually. There's nothing standing out at me going, I, I would spit that out. Why do I like this coffee over the rest of them? It has more body, it has more oomph to it. There's like, uh, there is like a lot more fruit acidity, like a crisp apple acidity right up front with the sweetness, melded in with a nice texture and body to the coffee. So it almost has everything and it's really well balanced and all of that still lingers in the palate all the way through. So it's kind of like, it has everything, it lingers through the palate and finishes quite nicely. The second cup was my second favorite cup didn't have that acidity. There's just like a hint of acidity in this cup. It didn't have, but it has all the brightness, it has all, sorry, it has all the sweetness and a little bit of the texture of body that this does, but just not as much and it doesn't linger. So this seems to be more of everything, whereas this is just a little bit back of everything. That's what I would guess. And then the third cup, or I guess my least favorite, just is, it is just too light a body and that doesn't allow for the rest of the flavor and the sweetness and the acidity to kind of carry forwards. Like there's some of all of that at the beginning of the cup, but it doesn't carry. It finishes really quickly off the palate, quite, still quite juicy, but just, just doesn't linger. Just not the espresso that I was after. It's quite fruity, quite light, but not as like not as enjoyable as these ones. There is a heightened sweetness in this cup, but it just doesn't linger. Like it's there. I would almost say this is a very sweet cup, like white sugar sweet versus these. These are more very kind of like pear sweet or like uh, stewed apple sweet. Like it's a very caramelized sweet sweet, whereas this is very just kind of sugar sweet. So it hits you, but then it kind of just trails off. And that's what I would say about this. It's just lighter on everything. It doesn't quite hit you like these ones do. So, uh, whew, which grinder is which? Hmm. If I was to take a guess, it would probably go, uh, it would probably go the Varia Hy uh, Hyper Ultra Nova Burrs, Varia Default Burrs, and the opus, but don't know. Let's just check, hey? Let's just check. Drum roll. Ah, so let's just quickly, I should let you know. Opus is the red, default burrs is the white, and the ultra hypernova burrs, or the hyper ultra nova burrs is the red, is the blue. Red, white, and blue. Red, white, and blue. So my favorite copy was from the blue. There you go. So that was the Varia Hyper Ultra Nova Burrs. From the white, from the Opus. 
red, white, and blue. So I, I ended up being right there. That's, I mean, this, this doesn't surprise me. I mean, I've got two grinders, very similar. Uh, you know, they just differ a little bit in their burrs. Uh, whereas I've got one whole other grinder that's kind of completely different in its flavor profile. So that didn't surprise me at all. I kind of picked that in my mind. I was like, this is so much different to these two. Uh, when it came to these two, I really wasn't too sure. I've never tasted the Hyper Ultra Nova Burrs before. So uh, it is really interesting, really cool. I'm like, actually just incredible though, that like, same grinder, different burr sets, like completely different grind sizes so same flow rates but the grind size on the hype on the on the better burr set is uh it was just like way finer but but still got to the same point in the um brew recipe and a way more enjoyable cup of coffee yeah like it's another level. Now I'll probably come back and do a whole review of all the other Varia VS3 burrs but for now I can definitely say that the Hyper Ultra Nova Burr set for the Vari VS3, I can say what it offers against the default burrs, which is which is pretty awesome. Like it is, it is like I said, kind of like works like a high uniformity burr set uh, in the way that it runs, in the way that you have to dial your coffee in. Let's now do the filter cupping. Now I've swapped out the Fellow Opus, which is generally targeted towards an espresso crowd, and I've replaced it with the Fellow Ode Gen 2, which is similarly priced to the Varia VS3. However, the Ode Gen 2 does have a unique advantage of only really built for doing filter coffee. So I believe this is just a great match up for the Varia VS3, just to see at that price range how it competes to a dedicated filter grinder. Now, we're still gonna be grinding on a VS3 with default burrs and a VS3 with the Hypernova Ultra Burr set. So let me just get this sorted. I've got the grind sets matched. I'm gonna bring these cups over, fill them up, and we'll get this cupping started. Let's go. Okay, all right, that was fun. Now, as you can see, I've got these two cups here, and this is my favorite cup again on the left. I'll explain why this is my favorite cup. It is, it's more structured. So it just has, it has everything kind of structured together when you're drinking it. Um, it has a lot of flavor clarity. Uh, it has the sweetness, acidity, a balance of that through a body. What would be a filter body? This is like a really enjoyable cup of like pour over coffee or AeroPress that I would drink. Uh, it's, it's kind of has that juiciness to it. There's a there's a texture to it without it being like a body, I guess. It's not like, it's not taking away uh, any of the sweetness or acidity. It's quite accentuating it uh, through the palate as it lingers. So it's structured in that way. It's kind of all interconnected. Whereas these two here, I would say, let me just quickly double check. Yeah, these two here, they're really close. Like it's actually kind of going back and forward. I've switched these two back and forward each time, not too sure which one has the better acidity and sweetness. Uh, they're, they're as good as this with the acidity and sweetness. However, I just don't feel they're structured as well when it comes to the longevity of the flavor there isn't that texture to it immediately in the cup. Um, there is some as it lingers on the rest of the palate, but it, again, it's just not all up front. It's not served served right on the palate straight away. It kind of is broken up uh, into sweetness, acidity, and then it kind of like that lingers a little bit, and then there's you can get that hint of the body, which might give you some texturizing, but it kind of then doesn't linger off as long as this cup does as well. Structure, it's just structured. It holds up better. That's what a structure does. It just, it holds up better than these two cups. Now, obviously there is a pattern here like there was in the espresso. Um, so I would I would straight up go and guess that this is the Fellow Ode 
Gen 2 grinder. It's using 64 mil burrs, uh, which you know we all know as being fantastic uh, for filter grinding especially, but certainly there is an array of burrs that can come in a 64 size for filter coffee. So you've got a few options. This is the O Gen 2. Uh, this seems familiar to me for filter coffee, whereas these two, I'm not unhappy with these cups uh, and I haven't done extensive tasting with the Varia and filter coffee. However, they're not quite as good as the fellow Ode. Hmm. Or should I say what I'm guessing to be the fellow Ode. These two are very similar. I keep tasting them and switching them back. There is a really nice sweetness and acidity in these, but uh, as this cup cools, yeah, there's just a lot more flavor in this cup. Now this is a gorgeous coffee, by the way. This is a Rwandan Bourbon. It's a natural coffee, red guava, goji berry, and rock melon. Like a whole lot of kind of like tropical fruit in there, which is delicious. Um, it's in this cup a lot, uh, but I don't find the fidelity of those flavors that I've just mentioned so much in here, as much as just the characteristics of sweetness, acidity, body. There's not a lot of fidelity in the flavor pumping out here, but there's like a red guava here, you know, in, uh, in retrospect of all of that. Red, white, and blue. Red is the ode, white is the default Varia Burrs, blue is the Hyper Ultra Nova Burr set. Okay, I was wrong. Wow, that's the blue. So that's the Varia Vs3 Hyper Nova, Hyper Ultra Nova Burr set, which is interesting. I just want to throw back on the uh, the fact that, uh, as I mentioned in the espresso tasting, it was almost like I was using a set of burrs that were uh, uh, high uniformity. And, and for filter coffee, high uniformity is fantastic. That's kind of what you're aiming for. Uh, the Fellow O Gen 2, I guess, if I'm, if I'm allowing my thought chain to kind of fall out now, is kind of like uh, the Fellow O Gen 2 burrs are very forgiving burrs. So they're not high uniformity. Uh, they do offer a little bit of uniformity, but they kind of add that balance of, uh, of body, sweetness, acidity, and all that. Anyway, wow, I'm actually quite perplexed that that is the Varia Gen 2 burrs. So I really have no, because I said these are kind of swapping back and forwards. They're really close. Um, I really have no idea, but let's see if I can guess. Let's see if I can just pick these two apart, really, um, in terms of which one I think is the better cup, because that might serve us better as well. Good acidity, little bit of dryness on the end, good acidity, not a lot of sweetness, not super lingering. Yeah, again, the acidity's there, but it drops off real quickly. Dryness the similar, but yeah, this acidity is much higher than this cup. And that's really, right at this point, the only two things that are differentiating between these two cups. So we've already known this is the Hypernova Burr set. Red, Fellow O Gen 2 Burrs. And then the white, so that's the Varia Default Burrs. Interesting, interesting results. That was amazing. So the Varia Hypernova Burr set was my, were my favorite for the espresso and for the uh, filter cupping. I wouldn't have guessed that. And then you got the Fellow Gen 2 coming up and then the default burrs, uh, typically for espresso brewing anyway. That's what Varia says. All right, let's now talk the pros and the cons of the Varia VS3 Gen 2. And for me, one of the most impressive strengths of this grinder is its precision grinding capabilities. And I have been using this grinder for a while now, and it is whether I'm aiming for a super fine espresso grind and adjusting it ever so slightly to add one or two more seconds to my espresso brew time, or then just turning that dial all the way around and getting to a coarser setting for my cold brewing, getting the right grind size is flawless and easy to do. And then the efficiency and the speed of the workflow, adding the beans in, turning it on, giving it a little bit of a tap, it all feels natural and there's really nothing detracting from being able to focus then on other parts of the brewing process, especially early in the morning or dialing in a new bag of coffee. Another key advantage is the Varia VS3's ability to save you money with single dosing your beans. Let me explain. 
If you are looking for an upgrade in a grinder and you're moving away from one that has a hopper, single dosing your beans helps you ration and account for all the beans in your bag of coffee, as well as getting the absolute best out of each individual bean. Whereas a grinder with a hopper, there are more beans usually in the grinds chamber than you can account for in the hopper alone. And this retention is a non-issue with the VS3. So we talk value. And the value of the VS3 is awesome, and it offers incredible features without spending a fortune. It is a commercial grade grinder, not to be confused with commercial volume, it is definitely for the home, but it is built to last. And yes, as much as I've come to enjoy grinding on the Varia VS3, it is only fair to mention now there are a few limitations. These cons, however, are like a small bump on a smooth road, and no grinder is without its own drawbacks. Let's take a look. First, let's address the size of the catch cup. It can get a little full when grinding more than 25 grams. And it is not your standard 58 millimeter size either, which means if you are grinding specifically for espresso, you wanna pick yourself up a dosing ring for the perfect fit and clean workflow. Additionally, while the bellows feature is fantastic for keeping your work area clean with low retention, it does require the occasional wipe down on the base underneath the dose cup to prevent coffee powder from accumulating. And finally, for some users, the fact that it comes with an electric brick for the power, this might be a minor inconvenience if you are looking to keep your workspace cable free. But here's the thing, when you do weigh these cons against the incredible pros we've discussed earlier, they seem like minor inconveniences than deal breakers. Now some of you might remember two concerns that were raised with the first generation VS3 grinder. One was a shifting grind collar and the other was stalling under load. And I am pleased to report that the Varia VS3 Gen 2, these issues have all been addressed and resolved. In fact, let me show you in real time. I've been using this grinder extensively and even with varying beans and grind settings, there's no shifting grind collar and stalling is a complete thing of the past. And this is a testament to the improvements made in the second generation model from Varia. Whilst I can't show you there is no shifting in the grinder without heading to a time lapse, I am gonna throw 15 grams of a filter grind, 17 and a half, on the tightest, finest setting possible, like almost right on zero, and there won't be any stalling. So let's do this. So I'll have it, no burrs moving. Tighter again a little bit. Still good. And whilst I didn't account for uh, Turkish grinding in my brewing methods, that's pretty close, that's like powder. Now cue to the time lapse where I'm gonna put a whole bunch of beans through this grinder and you will see that the grinds dial won't move at all. So let's talk cleaning. Disassembling the Varia to clean is as easy as removing everything you can from the top of the grinder, then unscrewing the hopper all the way coarse until it comes off, and then removing the ball bearing that's sitting on top of those outer burrs. Then you can pull out the outer burr set, which is also the burr carrier. From here, undo that interior cone burr nut, and then remove and account for all the washers as well, as well as removing that inner burr. From here, you can go that little bit further to remove the scraper underneath the inner burr set. And looking into the burr chamber, you realize it really doesn't hold all that much retention inside of the VS3. As all the metal parts use an anti-static oxidization surface treatment. And so with a quick wipe down and a clean off of those burrs, you can assemble the VS3 back in the opposite way and you have a tip top working grinder for years to come. So as we wrap up our journey with the Varia VS3 Gen 2 coffee grinder, 
I can't help but still be impressed by this valuable grinder. It exceeds my expectations in so many ways. From its precision grinding to its speed now and efficiency, the Varia BS3 has proven itself a worthy companion for any coffee lover. Those minor drawbacks that we discussed earlier, well, they pale in comparison to the unbeatable value and performance that this grinder brings to my daily coffee routine. So here's the verdict. I wholeheartedly recommend the Varia BS3 Gen 2 coffee grinder to anybody. It's not just a grinder, it's a game changer at the right price. And I want to express my gratitude for you joining me on this coffee journey today. If you found this review helpful, don't forget to give it a good thumbs up and then certainly hit that subscribe button as your support means the world to me and it keeps this channel going. Now, I'd also love to hear from you. Have you tried the Varia BS3 Gen 2? And do you have any questions about it? Share your thoughts in the comment section down below as I'm always excited to engage with fellow coffee enthusiasts. Until next time, thanks for being part of our community and we'll see you later.